Hey everybody, this is round three of my playthrough of the Rise of the Rune Lords Burnt Offerings Pathfinder Adventure card game. It is Sione's turn. She was over at the Sandpoint Cathedral trying to pick up some free cards and blessings and not really doing all that well. But the the advantage, or the, the good thing is that Valeros managed to close that location, meaning that we only have the town square and the city gate left to explore. So the villain has to be in one of those two places. If we encounter the villain, the villain will escape to any lo open location. But in this case, there's only one open location, so we'll know exactly where the villain went, and then we can hone in on the villain. So let's look at this. Uh, I'm, I'm just arbitrarily choosing to go to the town hall next, or uh, town square, rather. And the town square... All the sound and life of the community comes together at this well-trodden square at the heart of town. People of all walks enjoy themselves as they go about their daily business, whether it be shopping for goods, hawking their wares, or meeting with friends. But even here, there are those who lurk in the shadows, eyeing marks, to, uh, marks for more nefarious purposes. So let's see if there are any special conditions at this location. You may discard a card from your hand to explore during your turn, the card may not be recharged. I don't feel comfortable discarding cards because, again, your discard pile, or rather your draw deck, is your health in this game. And so if you go discarding cards, you're just depleting health. It's like blood magic. It's just, it's really expensive to, to, to do that. So I probably won't be doing that. And yet... I know myself, and so we'll see what happens, because it does kind of seem like a risk that I would take. Anyway, let's find out. It's Sione's turn, so she'll travel over from the, the cathedral over to the town square, which isn't super far. I think the Swallowtail Festival, the town square, and the cathedral are all basically the same physical location in world. So she steps outside, essentially, and she's going to explore. It's worth noting that Valeros is not here. He is still at the cathedral. So that means if she goes into combat, she doesn't get his uh, assistance, and his assistance comes in the form of a d4. So that's not applicable here. Which is okay, I feel okay about that, because she has this force missile, which gives her a really nice attack option. So I feel okay about this, but it's just something to keep keep in mind. Sage. This is great. This is the kind of card that that benefits Sioni, uh, and this is kind of, she's well suited to this. So, Charisma Diplomacy check of 6. Well, Diplomacy, or Charisma is a d12 for Sioni, so this is her, this is her specialty. She rolled an 8. She also actually has a plus 2 bonus to that for Diplomacy or something like that. So, either way, she succeeds at, at, at the check to get this ally. So, we can add that to it to her deck. Now, technically speaking, that's the end of her turn, and she is now ending her turn on a two, four, six, seven cards. You're not allowed to have seven cards in your hand, so I'm going to take this this old ally, the guard, who adds a bonus to... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I did last time and let fate decide. So one of these two cards is going to get discarded, and I don't know which. I forget which is which. I don't care. So I'll just do this one, because if I don't do that... Actually, I should just double-check to make sure the guard says he can be discarded to do that. No, he cannot do that. That is not a power that the guard has. Guess who's going to get discarded? The sage. Discard this card to explore your location. So it just makes sense to discard to explore, because at the end of your turn, you have to discard anyway. So you might as well do it where you get something. Oh, this is great. This is really, really good. This actually emboldens me quite a lot. So this is a goblin raider. That's a henchman. Which means that this location cannot possibly contain the villain. Because the villain and the henchman were divided into stacks of one, with each one getting into each location. And we have now found all three henchmen, meaning that the villain at this point can only be located in the city gate. 
So when we close this location, we could move over there and we would essentially guarantee that we can find that we'll be able to find the villain. So that's really good. This is a goblin. So I'm going to have to remember to roll a d6 to see if we take fire damage, which I'm afraid I'm going to forget. So I'm going to put this die out here just so I kind of maybe won't forget. Maybe I'll even put the die on the card. If undefeated, doesn't matter. If defeated, cool. So this is Sioni. She's got all the things that she needs right now. She's got a force missile, which uh, she can discard to roll her arcane die, which is a d12, and then 2d4. I only have one d4, so I'll roll it twice with the force trait. So that's 2d4, and then with her arcane die, she also gets a plus 2. So, or... Yeah, yeah, her arcane die. She gets a plus two. Now, if if I don't want to discard this card, and I don't want to discard this card, then I can succeed at an arcane six to recharge it instead. Sioni has a special feature on her character card that says you don't have to do that. You can just automatically recharge. So that goes straight back into her draw deck. So she'll be rolling 2d4. She's aiming for an eight. So one d4, she gets a three. The other d4, she gets a two. So she's up to six. So as long as she, oh, six, three, wait, what did I just do? Three and a two, that's not six, that's a five. That's five. And then she has her arcane bonus, which is plus two. So that's uh, essentially, she has rolled a seven total now. Seven. So if she rolls anything on this d12, she'll get 8. But I'll just roll for fun, just to see how, just how severely. Okay, cool. So she defeats the goblin by a lot. And she's got this damage die that she needs to roll now. Uh, and if it comes up a 1, then she and Valeros have to take fire damage, 1 point of fire damage. And they rolled, she rolled a one. Okay. So she does have to discard. So I get to choose what she gets to discard. And I think I'm going to just do this one because... Actually, that is rechargeable, and that is kind of nice. I think we're just going to... Yeah, I'm going to discard the guard. Oop, oop. Okay, so I've got four cards left. I could discard this. Why would I discard, though? That that wouldn't make any sense. Because we, we now know that the villain isn't in this deck. So we are in one of the best... Oh, wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. So now that we've killed the henchman, and we've taken damage. Actually, not all of us have taken damage. Valera still needs to take damage. Guess I'll just get rid of this mattock because I'm kind of tired of it being around. But I'm sure now that I've said that, I'll need it the next turn. Okay, we've gotten rid of a henchman, so we are allowed to automatically attempt to close this location. And when you close it, it says banish a card from your hand. I hate that one. Um, so banishing means losing a card forever. Um, and I'm not going to do that with something useful, so I'm just going to banish the blessing. Easy come, easy go with blessings, especially the blessings of the gods, which you automatically acquire when you, when you encounter them. So this location is now closed, and that's huge. So Valeros didn't even have to go to the town square. That's nice. That's her turn, so it is going to be Valeros's turn next time. And he is going to travel over to the city gate to um, to hunt down that villain. But we'll do that on the next video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.